We got an MJF video package. He was gone today. He yeah. returns next week. And later, we had he's, a he's Roosh comp- promo. Yeah, they're, they're, they're building him up for Roosh. It sounds like MJF versus Roosh. Not necessarily. On, never, not, it could be next week, but but pro, but for sure soon. Yeah. Probably yes. MJF's first match, whether it will be on the pay-per-view or whether it will be on TV, looks like it's going to be with Roosh, which is uh, it's an interesting match. It's, it's a good match. It's a really good match. Elite comes down to the ring. Okada tells the fans, shut up, bitches. At which point the fans start chanting his name. And then uh, they talk about how, uh, well, Jack notes that Tony picked his dream team. We still beat him. And not only that, my first match in nine months, I pinned Brian Danielson. And then Nick talks about how their Reeboks were the best-selling shoes in years. He said he and Matt had gifts. He gives Okada a brand-new Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. The fans proceed to chant, you deserve it. <laughs> that was hilarious. This Okada as a heel is like, he's great at it, but they will not accept him as a heel under any people, circumstances. People love him because they he's great. They love this guy. They love the guy. Yeah, but he's a heel. Matt says that uh, double or nothing Adam Copeland was injured. He said, that's on me. I did tell him to break a leg. Maybe we jinxed him. That was a pretty clever line there. Said, tonight you are hereby stripped of the TNT title. And we were told that there needs to be a new champion, so we have found just the guy. After the biggest pinfall victory of his entire career, it's actually the second biggest. He once pinned me. But, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) I present to you the new TNT champion, the scapegoat Jack Perry. And before they can give him the title, Chris Daniels interrupts, and he announces that, yes, I was fired, but I got a new job. Tony has made me the new interim executive vice president. So basically, he's Tony Khan. Anything Tony wants done, Daniels does it. So we got a babyface authority figure here. He mm-hmm. said this belt will not be given away. We're going to have a bunch of qualifying matches. No managers or seconds at ringside. No outside interference. Shouldn't that be the case, like, more yes. often? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that would be... So that's for the... Um, that's... The winners go on to Forbidden Door to get a shot at the title in a ladder match. Yeah. So it would be like uh, four or six guys or something like that. So, um, yeah, so now the TNT title in the qualifying matches, there can be no interference. However, when they win the championship, there's uh, theoretically there can be interference. Yes. Because it's only the Continental title, which is the one Okada has, where you're not allowed to have any interference. I do like in these matches where they say, uh, they do this for the Continental Classic as well, where they say no seconds, you know, no managers or whatever. And then and, and then an actual rule is no outside interference. Yeah. Should, should There's no outside that? interference in any match. In theory. In yes. Theory, in theory, That's the rule be. in every match. But they enforce it only in certain matches. Yes. Yeah. So the Bucks go after Daniels, but the Acclaims music hits, and they come out and make the save. God, so that's just mean the Bucks and uh, and uh, Okada are going to wrestle the acclaimed and Billy Gunn? That's what it sounds like to me. Well, We're going to get to see Okada and Billy Gunn in the ring together. Yeah, I know. That's, that's the first thing that I noticed when they did that. Yes. It's like, oh, my God. I remember seeing Tanahashi with Billy Gunn. So, I don't know. Wasn't wasn't my cup of tea at that on that night either. But, um, yeah, it's something. It's, I look, if it's a TV match, it's a TV match, whatever. So we had the Casino Gauntlet match for the shot at Swerve. And yeah, this match was awesome. This was in, like, I I, I think that um, it's similar to the match that they did a couple of weeks ago, but the actual, it's it's like. No, it's some, the exact same match. Yeah, but a different and, name. And in the, but no, a different name. They called it Casino Gauntlet the first time. Did they? Yes. Because I know that because it's actually not a gauntlet. It's just. It's not. They said it was a casino what? gauntlet match with sudden death rules. Was how they okay. just explained okay. it okay. the first time. Okay, okay, okay. For, it's but it was a TNA gauntlet match. TNA's matches like that. TNA, TNA would do matches like that and call them gauntlet matches. But in WWE, a gauntlet matches the series. You run the gauntlet. That's why it's called a gauntlet match. It was a series of matches, right? Yes. Yeah, like so this is know, not running the gauntlet, but they call it a gauntlet match. Yeah, but that's because TNA used to call it a gauntlet match. The same thing. But so, not the exact same thing. TNA would do would do it as a battle royal, you know, over the top rope as opposed yes. to a pin. This is a series. This is a, a first pin match, a sudden death 
gauntlet match with no over-the-top rope rules. So here were the guys, and uh, essentially, long story short, they worked this like a Royal Rumble or whatever, where during the intervals, a new person would come in, and they would just run wild, hit all their big moves. Then another guy would come in, run wild, hit all their big moves. And so you had these guys running wild and hitting all their big moves. Pac, Switchblade, Mystico, Will Ospreay, Shota Umino, Claudio, Leo Rush, Orange Cassidy, Hechicero, and uh, I think he was actually the last guy in. And the rules are, I mean, they don't tell you how many guys. They don't tell you what the intervals are. They don't put a clock on the screen. They had a clock on the screen. They had a clock on the on the Tron. Yeah. But they didn't have a clock where you could see on the screen when the next person was coming out. Well, but, that's because that's because that's because they had no set intervals. They just put the clock up whenever they needed to. They actually So put the clock up on the screen too. Unlike with WWE where they give you a time but they never adhere to it, this one they just even bother to give you a time. It's like they basically said Guys are going to come in whenever they come in. No set time. Whenever they just put the clock on the screen, they're coming in. And it could be three minutes. It could be one minute. It doesn't matter. It's just that's that's the rules. So finally it comes down to uh, Will Ospreay and Orange in there. And Ospreay tries a Stormbreaker. Orange turns into Eric and Rana. There's a reversal. Huge Oss cutter. And Will Ospreay, for the second time, wins this match. Pins Orange Cassidy. And he will go on to face Swerve at Forbidden Door. It was interesting that he won with the Oss Cutter because he's never, he hasn't won with the Oss Cutter in years. It's well, you want been... him to win with the Oss Cutter. I agree. He should be winning with several different moves so that people I... get into these near falls. Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. I, that's, I thought that was a good thing, that he beat a top guy with the Oss Cutter. So, yeah, everyone looked great. Hechicero was fucking awesome in this match. Inc- everyone Everybody was. was but everyone I mean, was. Hechicero, everyone. I'd forgotten he was gone. He was only, well, he's, only he's only he's only wrestled there once or twice. I know. I, think, I mean, two or three times. Two or three I times. wanted him back, and now here he is, and he looks so great in this match. But yeah, everybody looked great. Osprey was like the biggest star by miles, and then Swerve came out. And they had a stare down as the show ended, and then we had our second odd faux pas, which is Excalibur is going to run down some matches. So he runs down a match for uh, for Rampage. And then he starts reading the match for Collision, but instead they put the dynamite graphic on the screen. And he says, Pierce, we're out of order here tonight. And then he reads the Wednesday one. Then they cut to the Saturday one, and he reads that one as well. This this guy had a rough night, and it wasn't his fault. Yeah. He, was, uh, he was a victim of, I don't know what, but anyway. So that was the Dynamite show. A lot of uh, exciting stuff as a follow-up to the Double or Nothing show. I thought it was a... I thought it was a really good show, especially, you know, that last match. Um, you know, and they set up a lot of stuff. I mean, the only thing from Forbidden Door, you know, I mean, they set up the main event and, and the uh, Mercedes match, um, but nothing else. And, uh, you know, but I, we got a couple weeks to do that. And, um, you know, I, I guess I guess probably on the TVs for the next couple weeks, we're going to have a lot of CMLL and... Uh, um, New Japan guys, and probably maybe uh, some people from Stardom as well. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.